Blog Talk Radio. Bringing you excellent entertainment from the king of DC media. Here's the Inside Acting Radio Show. Happy Christmas Eve, dear listeners. Today, my guest is Trixie, a.k.a. Jeff Manabet from the a cappella comedy troupe, The Kenzie Six. Their current show is Oi Vey in a Manger, playing at Theater J. Down in D.C., for tickets, you can call 202-777-3210. That's 202-777-3210. To find out more about the Kenzie Six, you can go to www.kenzie6.com. That's K-I-N-S-E-Y. Now, the Kenzie Six consists of founding member Ben Schatz as Rachel, Jeff Manabet as Trixie, Spencer Brown as Trampolina, and Nathan Markin as the baritone-voiced Lenny. So I see Trixie is on the line. Let me bring her on in. And how are Merry you? Christmas. Merry Christmas Eve. Good, good. Yeah, thanks for coming on the show. Well, thanks for having me. I'm so excited to be here. Fantastic. Fantastic. So what can fans expect when they see your show? You know, the Oy Day in a Manger is a raucous, ribald, outrageous holiday show starring four lovable and quirky drag queens singing in four-part harmony about the holidays. Jewish and Gentile uh, tensions surface. We talk about uh, politics. We talk about raunchy body humor. We talk about (laughs) gun control. And we talk about uh, white supremacy and the incoming craziness of the Trump administration. I mean, my goodness, (laughs) I couldn't help but say, this is a holiday show. And even though we've actually been running the holiday show for many years now, with the incoming craziness, we thought we've got to update this. We can't just stay silent, and especially playing here in Washington, D.C., we've got to say something about it. So we've added a a very big political element to our holiday show, and I think uh, D.C. fans and D.C. audiences are going to especially love our outrageous take on what's coming into uh, what we're going to be living with for the next four years. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy times right now. Yeah, things don't really make sense anymore. It's crazy. It doesn't. It doesn't make sense, and we have. Um, we want to make sense of it and bring light to some of that stuff, and we didn't want to remain silent. So we're going to play about it in glorious four part harmony, and these four crazy drag queens are going to take you on a ride. <laughs> All right. So now parody has a kernel of truth. So who are some of the people you poke fun of in the show? Well, obviously, I just talked about how we're looking at the Trump administration. Trump himself plays a nice um, plays a nice role, uh, or rather, punching bag in our show. Uh, Steve Bannon is um, that that uh, is, I guess, his counsel. Um, and yeah. Known and known uh, connections with white supremacy, so we have to bring that up and uh, and um, anti-Semitism. So. There's, there's got to be something said about that. Uh, we also talk about, we also poke fun at the NRA and our country's obsession with uh, guns. And we talk about um, those people who are so anti-immigrant and look at, um, look at immigrants in general as just having anchor babies uh, all over the place, popping them left <laughs> and right. Um, and, and funny enough, we also poke fun at ourselves, which I think that, is a, is a lot of fun for audiences to watch. Yeah, excellent. Yeah. So now, who comes up with those wow lyrics? <laughs> when you watch the show, the craziest of the bunch is Rachel, and she is just fall to the wall, raunchy, uh, outrageous, loud mouth. But the thing is, Rachel is played by Benjamin Schatz, founding member of the Kinsey Six, and he is a Harvard-trained lawyer, went to both undergrad and grad school at Harvard, and, and wow. for a period worked with Trump, with the, with, the, me, with the Clinton administration in the 90s, and um, was very vocal in um, gay rights activism uh, when he was a lawyer. 
And then he made the switch to become, of course, naturally a singing drag queen. And um, <laughs> he, <laughs> he kept up his, um, his activism through this group. And a lot of what you uh, will hear um, in the show uh, reflects his, um, his very strong uh, political and queer rights viewpoint. And, of course, the three, the three other actors and performers in the group we are very much um, in line with the same viewpoint. And, uh, but he is our prime lyricist and our prime script writer. And, and he is just an, an incredible comedian. I think people are going to love seeing the show multiple times because uh, Ben, as Rachel, loves to go off script. Things go crazy. And he's just <laughs> a lot of fun to watch, especially his 11 o'clock number. I'm not going to say what it is but I think uh, people are going to love it, especially if they like uh, raunchy humor. He's just, just an incredible thing to watch. And um, I think that, that audiences see, see, and more, uh, around the world who have seen us really appreciate the kind of um, intelligence that he brings to his lyrics, even though uh, people may, may see it and, and think, oh, they're just raunchy, or but they're just political, or it's not really my, my case to see that, that kind of uh, openly sexual um, humor out there. There's a, there's a great mix of it, and it's always done with great care and great intelligence. We want to make sure that what we're saying um, is both entertaining and insightful. And Ben is, is, does a great job of, making, of doing a, a, um, a balancing act of the two. Yeah, yeah, you got to have that balancing act. It can't just be raunchy. So let's switch gears and talk about your music. So I know you have uh, CDs out there. So how are those selling? Oh, um, you know, I I did a recent, uh, I did a little bit of research into how physical CDs are selling, and they're not doing very well, as we know. No, Digital no. music is 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 the king of the hill. And um, oh, we've man. seen the, the downfall of Tower Records and, and Virgin Megastore, all of those things. But I have to say, when we go on tour, our CDs sell extremely well. And we've got uh, nine CDs, um, and we just uh, released our ninth album called Eight Is Enough. And they, they all sell extremely well, especially during the holidays. Uh, people are looking for fun gifts to, to, to give to their friends or enemies, depending on. Uh, what they want to <laughs> offer, uh, and we have we, we even have the soundtrack to our show "Always in a Manger" recorded live in San Francisco, and um, I think I think it's 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 surprising to me that in the in the digital era people want CDs, but I think when they're coming out of the show, people want something physical to hold on to, and digital music is you're not holding on to that. It's ephemeral. It's in it's in your your phone or in your computer or in your car. But here you're holding on to something, and there's, you know, we our CDs have lovely pictures in them. Some of them are are rated, and they love looking at that. One of our CDs has hidden messages that you can only photograph that we offer. So we we like to um, make make our physical CDs something that people want to get uh, because not only not only for the music, but for all the images and the fun fun little messages that we send and, and the lyrics that we leave there. Um, it, it's really uh, a great gift uh, to give, I think, to loved ones and, as I said, enemies, uh, depending on your political persuasion. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> okay, so the, so the Kenji Six has been in documentaries, so talk about those. You know, the, the documentary that we've got is called Almost Infamous, and that follows <laughs> our... Yeah, it follows our um, our experience doing a Las Vegas run, and we we have to say that it was it was not what we expected. I mean, what what what, what should we have, what we should have expected was Vegas, and um, I think our um, experience with with our political humor, especially, and some of our more um, abiding material, I think it, it didn't it didn't quite translate to the party, party, party atmosphere of Vegas. So it was it's a very um 
that that's kind of a climax of the film is following us as we go to, to Las Vegas. But it actually follows, uh, especially the founding members, Ben Schatz and Erwin Keller, who has since retired, and their founding of the group back in 1993. And mm. uh, their their journey from a a a bunch of friends who sing uh, to the Ragapella Beauty Shop Quartet that you see today. And actually, I, I want to talk a little bit about the beginnings of the group. It's, it, it started kind of on a whim. Um, the bunch of yeah. friends is Ben, ben Schatz, um, Erwin Keller, Maurice Kelly, um, Jerry Friedman, and, uh, and I think one, one other person I'm Name. And and actually, um, some lesbians uh, all went to a Bette Midler concert dressed as the Andrews Sisters, and uh, mm. none none of them were even expecting that it would become what it is today. But it was just a bunch of friends who went into the Andrews Sisters, and they went to the concert in drag, and they were the only ones there in drag except for Bette Midler, of course. <laughs> and they were a hit. Audiences there look at them and what is this? We want to know more about you. Do you sing? Do you sing? Are you a singing group? And you know, just as the Andrew sisters that gave up that vibe, and they said no. And little did they know that uh, being inspired by Bette Midler, they went home and in the car they said, "Is that funny that people thought we were a singing group?" And they started singing. They all had musical backgrounds that they hadn't revealed to each other, and. What do you know? They they were contacted by a promoter actually, and said, "Hey, I love your look. Why don't you guys perform for us?" And there mm. was the there was the the little seed that planted in them and said, "You know what? Let's start something." Um, and then then their first uh, public performance was at a bus stop in the Castro District of San Francisco, mm. uh, and there's actually video of that performance on YouTube, our YouTube channel. The the beginnings of the Kinsey Six there. And that's how it started. At a bus stop, oh, well, nice. a Bette Midler concert, and a bus stop. And suddenly, we're traveling the world. Uh, we've, we've been to over 40 states in the U.S., and Canada, Mexico, Europe, the U.K., uh, and, then, and then we're going to be in Australia. We've actually done Sydney Pride already, and we're heading there again next year. But we've, we've been around the world, and it's it's an incredible journey from um, from going on a whim to do something, <laughs> and then to this, which is a, uh, a career for the four of us, a full time job. That's amazing. Yeah, thank you. Wow, thank that's you. amazing. Yes, yes. So, what would you say is your fan base? Oh gosh, I think we have <laughs> we have a, a such a diverse and devoted incredibly devoted fan base. Uh, we have uh, members of the LGBT community and straight people. We have a strong Jewish contingent who, who especially um, during Oyvay and a manger, but around, uh, year round, um, we have a, a, a great uh, uh, Jewish presence in our audiences. And I think that comes off because uh, Ben, ben Schatz um, and family member Erwin Keller, really, they were, since they're the primary writers, they inject a lot of their um, their humor in it and their background, and both of them um, have Jewish backgrounds. Uh, we also have uh, different layers of the theater community. We have people who love um, comedy, people who love political humor, people who love um, body, uh, very sexual, crude humor. Um, we love people who like very intelligent humor. Uh, we, and we have people who come in just for the music, a cappella especially. I mean, there are groups now like um, Pentatonics who have hit it big, and that's that's so fabulous for them. And they they're, they're putting a cappella on the map. We've been, been doing a cappella since uh, the early '90s, and uh, yeah. people come to see us for our version of of uh, a four part harmony. And the the I said, I, I've always been impressed with the, the kind of people that come to us. And in big cities and small towns, you know, we, we, we attract uh, different kinds of people, especially in the small towns. I think we, we attract even more, an even more electrified audience. 
Um, really? San Francisco. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's interesting. DC, New York, uh, San Francisco. I feel like we get great crowds, but, but, but big cities get big entertainment all the time. So we're not, um, I mean, we, we, when we go to smallest towns, we attract, um, I think, beleaguered progressives and, and people who just don't see our kind of entertainment a lot. It's not offered all the time. Um, or, 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 or rather, entertainment like us is not offered very, very often. And so that when people see us, the, the reaction is stronger. And the audiences, I think, they're, when they come together, they're not together very often either. So the, <clears throat> excuse me, the atmosphere in the audience is just so charged. And afterwards, you can, we get thanks for coming into to the communities. For example, after the election, we performed in Boise, Idaho, and Whitefish, Montana. Um, wow. And those, yeah, and then those communities, I mean, Idaho uh, and, and Montana aren't really, they're, 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 they're really strong bastions of, I think, conservative politics. Um, but when we yeah. go there, we're attracting progressives and, uh, and, and liberals and, and, and people who, I think, are not seeing themselves necessarily reflected in, 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 in uh, in, in bigger spaces. So when we go there, it's, it's, it's really heated and it feels powerful. It feels really <laughs> powerful. Um, and, and especially after the election, we thought we had many people who came up to us and gave us hugs. You know, there was such a feeling of, of distraught and of despair. Um, and when we, we were able to, to, to bring light to what just happened, but also the laugh when laughter was most needed. And and that that was a great feeling. And when we go around the country throughout the year, never I mean, never mind the election. I know the election was a big deal, but when when we go yeah. throughout the the community, it still feels that way. Um, in, in in around the country, in in more conservative states, we performed in Utah, in Texas, Lubbock, Texas, in Kansas, in the red of the red states, and our audiences are. And we appreciate it there. And we, we just, we love going there. Sometimes I, I have to say some of the most rewarding experiences have been in, in the red states. So I love coming to DC. DC is amazing. <laughs> and I hope, I hope people who, if you want to come see the show, get your tickets soon because they're going to sell out. They're, they're, they, they, the shows have been ele- just, just amazing and electric. I just, I love, I love coming to DC, especially with our more boys and a manger. It's been I have to say, it, it's like performing in Whitefish, Montana. <laughs> it's, just, it's just fun. All right, so we're coming near the end here. So talk a little bit about uh, how fans can uh, find out about your upcoming shows for uh, next year. Well, they can visit our website, kinsey6.com, K-I-N-S-E-Y-S-I-C-K-S, and they can also sign up on our mailing list, which you can find on my contact page, and they send we send one or two um, emails, always updating our fans about uh, when we're going to be coming into the community so they can uh, avoid us. And the, the fa- Facebook also has uh, a great pres- – we have a great presence on Facebook, facebook.com slash Kinsey6, again, K-N-S-E-Y-S-I-C-K-S. We also have a calendar there, and you can uh, friend all the characters, Trixie, uh, Winnie, Rachel, and Trampolina, uh, and you can also find us on YouTube, Instagram, and Twitter. So we're we're all over social media. We're very active, and we'd love to say hi to you over there. So say hi. <laughs> okay. Okay, Trixie. Well, it was a pleasure to have you on the show. Uh, break legs and Merry Christmas. Thank you. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year, William. Thanks for having me on the show. Okay. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye-bye. All right. All right, folks, so just remember to do something for your career every day and break a leg. Merry Christmas. Looking for a show to see this weekend? Look no further than D.C. Metro Theater Arts. 
They've got reviews, Q&As with actors, and much, much more. Visit DCMetroTheaterArts.com. That's DCMetroTheaterArts.com. Under the dark you pacify me Hold my breath Take me down, I won't fight Beat on my heart, you drum inside me Somewhere my death Makes a sound no one can find out 